In prior videos, I've shown how to use the SurveyCTO Data Explorer in order to monitor data as it's coming in. In this video, I'll focus on another set of tools available in SurveyCTO to assist you in your monitoring efforts. These are automated quality checks. Automated quality checks are available also from the Monitor tab of your SurveyCTO server console. If I scroll down, this Form Submission section is where I can go into the Data Explorer in order to monitor form data manually. I'm going to keep scrolling down to the section on Automated Quality Checks. I'm going to go ahead and enable that here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few automated checks in order to supplement the sort of manual checks that I've been doing. So here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a quality check. And right now I'm thinking about the duration, the amount of time that enumerators spend filling out a survey. What I'd like to do is I'd like to specifically flag surveys that are below a certain duration. So say 100 seconds. What I'm going to do is say that I want to go ahead and check the duration field for values that are too low. And I want to warn when the value is less than 100. And I'm going to go ahead and save that as a quality check. So you can see now in my list of quality checks, I value is less than 100 fields duration. Now, I'm also going to go in and I'm going to set some options for my quality checks for this form. Let me go ahead and say to run these checks nightly uh, so that basically as data is changing, new data is coming in, these quality checks are being run and it'll go ahead and flag those cases where duration is under 100. Now, I'm going to also go in and think about there are cases where people might be spending too much time filling out forms as well. And it's a little bit difficult for me to, to say in advance you know, what is too much time or what is too little time. What I'd like to do is essentially flag outliers. So I'm going to go ahead and configure a different type of quality check, which is value is an outlier. I set this. I'm going to again look at the duration field for now. And I'm going to warn when the duration is more than a certain degree outside the interquartile range. The 1.5 is a common value, saying if there's a value that's more than 1.5 times outside the interquartile range, I want to flag that. This is a common sort of check that uh, statisticians uh, or econometricians might do on their data. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I have two checks now. Value is less than 100 for the duration field, and value is an outlier with a factor of 1.5 here for the duration field. Let me go ahead and run those quality checks now. So I have a pretty small data set. The quality check report ran very quickly. There's a full report that I can download as a CSV file. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel that for the moment. I'm going to scroll back up to this form submission section. And I'm going to go into the data explorer for this form. So when I load the data explorer now for this form, I want to point out that now in this check section in the top right, it shows that I have two quality checks configured. I have these two uh, checks on the duration field, and it shows that I have three warnings, and I can click to get a list of those warnings. It says that the field duration was found to be 90 for this submission, which is lower than the threshold that I'd configured. And then there are also a couple of cases that look like they're too long. Uh, so this is 399, this is 311, and this has been caught and identified as an outlier based on that interquartile range that I'd mentioned. And it says here what the quartiles are. Quartile 1 starts at 129, quartile 3 at 200. So I could also, again, download the CSV report. I could open an Excel and sort of track uh, follow-ups internally. But what I also wanted to show is how if I scroll down to the duration field here, I have my summary of the duration field, which you've seen in prior videos. But now if I, if I look at the bottom here, I can see that I have these quality checks configured, and the warnings associated with this field are summarized here in the field summary. And it makes it very easy to jump in 
and view the individual submissions that have been flagged. So this is a really quick case, 90 seconds, so just a minute and a half. And so I might look at this and say, why was this interview so quick? And I can see that in this case, consent wasn't given, and so it was probably a fairly uh, short conversation. If I look at these cases where uh, the interview seemed to take a, a long time, I can see uh, what went on in those, uh, in those interviews. I can see that consent was given here. I can see that a, a photograph was taken of the household, and I can click to open that. And I can basically examine the submission, and I could even follow up, for example, with the enumerator or with the enumerator's manager if I wanted to, to follow up uh, more closely. So that gives you a basic idea of how automated quality checks work. But I want to give you a bit more insight into other types of quality checks that are available. I'm going to switch back over to my Survey CTO server console. And here on the monitor tab, I'm going to go back down to that automated quality checks section. And I just want to point out that, for example, in this quality check section, help is available. And in the help topic, it discusses all of the different types of quality checks that you might want to configure. And I'm going to show you an example now of a slightly more complicated type of check, but also a very useful one. So I'm going to look at when the mean values differ significantly from one subgroup to another. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to open up my checks for this form. I'm going to say I want to create a new quality check. And this time what I want to do is I want to choose this group mean is different. And the mean that I want to look at is consent. Now consent is a yes, no question, but it's coded as zero and one. So the mean or average is meaningful. I've got a bunch of zeros and ones, and the average of them is essentially the consent rate. What I want to do is I want to keep an eye on that uh, consent rate. And whenever I see that for different enumerators, the consent rate differs in a statistically significant way, I want to flag a warning. And here I'm going to set the threshold for statistical significance at 0 0.15. 0 0.05 is the normal uh, threshold that you use for statistical significance. But I'm going to use 0.15 because I have a very small data set and I want to sort of overwarn rather than underwarn. Now here I need to identify which groups I care about. And I'm going to say that I'm going to group by a numerator here. And so essentially what I'm doing is I'm looking for group means that are different. The fields that I'm checking are consent. And then the, the field that identifies groups is a numerator. I'm going to go ahead and save that new check here. Now go ahead and run the report again. I've configured it to run nightly, but I want to go ahead and run it now so that I can get uh, the, the warnings. And then what I want to do is go back again up into the Data Explorer and see what kinds of new warnings I have. So we can see here now that I have three quality checks configured. I've got these two on the duration field and I have an additional one on the consent field. And I can see that now I have six warnings. And if I scroll down to the consent field where I have a summary, we can see that I have this summary here where I have the no's and the yes's overall. And I can see that in percentage terms if I want. I can see that now I have my quality check warnings as well. And I can see that with a p-value of 0 0.103, I can see that consent does differ by the, by the group identified by enumerators. And specifically, I can see that the mean for Mercy and the mean for Joanna differ significantly from the overall mean of consent. So we can see up here that overall 50% of people are consenting. But I can see here that clearly this is statistically significant uh, that Mercy and Johanna have different values. So what I could do is I can add a relationship summary here to look specifically at the relationship between enumerator and consent, and save that. And then here, 
what I want to do is I have my enumerators in columns. So I want to see consent. I want to see a summary of percentages by column. So we can see that even though I had an overall 50% consent rate, I can see that Mercy here actually has an 80% consent rate, and Joanna has a 20% consent rate. So this is what was flagged. We can see also that Precious has a 100% consent rate, but if I look at the end there, it's only out of two. And so this has not yet reached a level of statistical significance based on that p-value that I configured. So there are many other ways that you can use automated quality checks to help you in your monitoring as new data is coming in. Uh, this, I just wanted to give you a few examples, and I hope that you found it helpful. Thanks for joining.